Okay, guys, uh, here's your provincial, um, the one you did in class. So we'll start with this one right here. I'll graph in red. That's my point for y. That's my point for x. Remember, they have to change. So I've got to be at 5, 2. And my slope is 1 half. So that means down 1 over 2, 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 and I hit C. Number 2, calculate the change in speed of the bike from P to Q. Well, speed is kilometers per hour, which looks like km over h, which looks a lot like rise over run, which is slope. So, from P to Q, 40 over 2, 20 kmh. From Q, 3, or I'm sorry, uh, 15 over 3, which is 5 kmh. So I decreased by 15 kilometers per hour. Number 3, solve that system. You know me, I'm going to use elimination, so I'm going to multiply that by negative 2 and get 6x minus 2y equals 2. Then I'm going to add them. 10x equals 10. x equals 1. I look over here, I see there's only 1 with x equals 1, so I don't even need to finish it. How many solutions does this have? This was on your last test, this exact question. 3, 3. Same slope, different y-intercepts. So they're never going to touch, so no solution. LCM of 18 and 24. I always use 18 and 24. So that's 2 and 9 and 3 and 3. So that's 2 times 3 squared. And then 24 is 2 and 12, 2 and 6, 2 and 3, which is 2 cubed times 3. So then I just check 2 third, 2 to the third covers all my 2's times 3 squared covers all my squareds. So that's 8 times 9, which is 72. But I have it right here as cubed and squared for number 5. Number 6, greatest common factor. Well, I'm not going to do all this for you guys. Um, I'm going to say you've got to be able to divide in your head. It's 6. As an entire radical, 2 root 5. Well, remember, there's no index, so it must have been a 2. So that means two twos had to come out. So remember the shortcut. 2 squared goes back under there, which is the root of 5 times 2 squared which is the root of 5 times 4, which is root 20b. Number 8, smallest to largest. So I'm going to change these all to entire radicals. So that one becomes negative root 18. That is root 9, that is root 12, and that is negative root 28. What is the smallest? Negative root 28. So 4, that's first, then negative 18, that's second, then negative 12, that's third, then, neg or then 9, then 12. So it was 4, 1, 3, 2, 3. 4, 1, 2, 3. C. Simplify. 
as always, 2x cubed cubed times 3x to the fourth. That's got to go to everything inside. So that is 8x to the ninth times 3x to the fourth. 3 times 8 is 24. x to the what? What do we do with our exponents? We add them, so it's x to the 13th. So it is b. What can I do for you, boy? Are you still recording? Yes. Do you want to say hi? Hello! That was Sinjin, guys. Um, That's me. He needs something, though, and he won't tell me what it is. What? I'll wait till you're done recording. It's going to take like a 40 minutes. What? It's fine. Dad, it's fine. Okay, whatever. I'm going to learn some math. Fine. A road sign says turn right 1,000 feet. I need that in kilometers. So if you look on your data booklet, you're going to see that you have a measurement to change feet to centimeters. One foot is 30.48 centimeters. Now I need kilometers, so I'm going to change this to meters. So one foot is 0 0.3048 meters. Then I'm going to do this. I've got a thousand feet over meters. So I multiply the pair. 1,000 times that means the decimal's moving three places. So I've got 304.8 meters. In kilometers, that's 0.3 kilometers. Yards to centimeters. So I gotta go yards to feet to inches to centimeters. So, since I have to have all of those, I know it can't be A and it can't be B. So this one, uh, number 11, C, if I check that, 4 over 1, right? So 4 times 3 is 12. 3 times 12 is 36. 12 times 2.54 will get me my centimeters. It has to be C. Cos A. Cos equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Here's A. Adjacent, you don't know what it is. But you know that cos A is over 3. How do you find the third side of a right angle triangle? a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So 2 squared plus b squared equals 3 squared. 4 plus b squared equals 9. b squared equals 5. Equals, so b equals root 5. So that goes up there. B. I'm going to have to make this smaller to fit it all on the screen. Marbles are placed in the jar one at a time. So, which shows the mass of the jar? Well, since the marbles are placed in one at a time, one at a time, it can't possibly be this one or this one. Because these have fractional marbles. So it has to be one of these two. Please notice it says total mass. Which means we cannot start at zero. Because the jar has mass. So we have to start here. This much is the jar. Then we start adding marbles. So it had to be C. That almost tricked me. Range of the graph below. Range. That is the Y's. So I go to here and I color in the Y's. That is 1 up to 5. So that one works. Square brackets 1 to 5. But you will also notice for number 14 that this one also works. Because that's 1 to 5. So it has to be D. Functions. So, easy ones. That one. 
that one's a line. Output is six more than half the input. So that one is also a line. This one you can check. So that one's okay. So it's just this one. Let's look. Notice that input of four, when x equals four, y equals three and five. Two outputs at the same input. That's not allowed. So it's D. 60. Which slope? What does the slope represent of the graph below? Well, when you look at 16, you see that you are paying you if you sell for example five tickets you have received two hundred and fifty dollars so it's two fifty over five two hundred fifty dollars for five tickets break that down that's fifty for one which is fifty dollars for one ticket which of these is that price per ticket So they've given you a grid to do rough work on, which you were, you could have done. A line has a slope of two thirds and passes through that point. So I got to go out to six zero right there, and I'm going to zoom in on this for you guys. I got to go out to six zero, and my slope is two thirds. So I got to go up one two, and run one two three. And I'm going to go down 1, 2, and run 1, 2, 3. Then I'm going to use my straight line tool that you're all going to make fun of me for, but that's okay, because I can handle it. And there we go. Now, I look at my options here, and I see there they are. Negative 3, negative 6. Well, negative 3, negative 6. Well, that one's on it, right there. So, I can go ahead and check and see, as always, if there's any other that fit. There's no all of the above. And negative 3, negative 6 was definitely on it. So, I'm going to go ahead and circle that. A video game programmer needs to simulate a shot on a gaming screen. Shot needs to have a slope of 6.5. So my M, remember as soon as I see slope, M is 6.5, and it's got a target of 100, 250. Well, what is every single uh, expression that looks like that? That's an X of 100 and a Y of 250. The shooter is at a horizontal position of 65. So that means his x is is 65 so what do i have i need his position so i have a y and i don't know what it is so i have two x's two y's and a slope so what do i need to do slope equals y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 I have a slope. My slope is 6 over 5. And I have a y1 of 250 minus y over an x of 100 minus 65. So, uh, 6 over 5 equals 250 minus y over 35. And then I just need to do my algebra. 6 times 35 is 180 plus 6 times 5 is 30. So 210 equals 5 times 250 minus 5y. So 5 times 250, 5 times 200 is 1000. Plus 5 times 50 is 250. 
so that's 12 50 e minus 5 y bring that over that's going to be um, 1040 equals negative 5 y negative 1040 so y equals 208 now I look over here and I try to find the x and y that works for me and there they are I knew x was 70 65 and my y was 208 once again even though it looks different which of the following is not linear doesn't make a line well you should know that you already know that one is a line because we already did that question you already know constant speed is a line and you already know that a truck driver that's paid for every kilometer he drives is a line so it has to be a the above graph represents the relationship between the amount of gasoline remaining in a 50 liter tank and the distance driven by the car what does the x intercept mean the x intercept right there what does that mean that means I've gone 700 kilometers and my gas equals zero so that must mean that it is the total distance driven by the car Damien has a list of 37 potential customers in order to get a business grant he must graph his income determine the domain of his graph so domain are the X values or the independent variable so the independent variable is the customers so let's have a look at this this one goes for how long forever this one ends at 37 this one is all real numbers which would include fractions and this one would include fractions can you have a fractional customer no so it has to be B rewrite in general form general form a x plus b y plus c equals zero look at this does that look like that no it doesn't they all got to be on the same side and x has to be positive so I already have a positive x so I'm gonna leave x 5 over 5 I'm gonna move that y so it's gonna be minus y minus 6 and all that's gonna equal zero now up here notice no fractions but I have a fraction there so I gotta multiply everything by that fraction to get rid of it so fives cancel in the first one so I've got X minus 5y minus 30 equals 0 and there it is number 22 is C given that equation what must be true for the graph to have a positive slope and a positive y intercept so if I turn ax plus by plus c into slope intercept form I would get by equals negative x ax minus c wouldn't I but I don't want a negative and a negative. I want a positive and a positive. So that means this would have had to start negative, and this would have had to start negative. Then they could become positive. And B, of course, would also have to start positive, because when I divide by B, I'm gonna want positives so I look over here a would have to be negative B would have to be positive C would have to be negative for that to work well do I have that anywhere a is less than zero well, I got all kinds of a is less than zeros that's no problem C would also have to be less than zero so I look at that and I see if C was less than zero it would come over here it would become positive then I would be in business so that would come over so I would end up with BY equaled AX 
plus C. Then I would divide by B, and I would have everything positive. If A is negative, C is negative, and B is positive. So I look over here, and I find A is negative, no options. A cannot be negative in our choices. So if A is going to be positive, I'll change to blue, A has to start positive. So when he comes over here, he's going to become negative. So if A becomes negative, then B must be negative. So I've got right here, A is positive, I've got B is negative, and C then must also be positive, because when C comes over, it will divide by the negative B and become positive. It's a very tough question. Which of the following has negative slopes? Y equals negative 3. Y equals negative 2X plus 6. And there is my M. So I look at that one, and I see negative, negative, and Y equals 3 is this. Oop, negative 3. It's flat, so it doesn't have a negative slope, so it has to be D. Which of the following statements are true for that? Well, Y intercept. I better change this around. 3Y equals negative 2X plus 6. Y equals negative 2 thirds X plus 2. So which of the following statements are true? The Y intercept is negative 2. No, it's not. The Y intercept is positive 2. So that's not true. I'm going to erase that. That's not true. The line is parallel to 2x. No, that's not true, because 2 is the slope, and that's our slope. So that's not true. The slope-intercept for that is uh, 2 thirds positive. No, it's 2 thirds negative. So that's not true. The range is all real numbers. Can I have everything in there for y? Yes, I can. So it has to be A. It's only number 4 that's true. Which of the following graphs represents a line that goes through 6, 4 and is perpendicular to negative 2 thirds? So I need my M to be 3 halves and my X and Y to be 6, 4. So all I gotta do is look on these four graphs and find which one goes through 6, 4. This one doesn't. It's out. 6, 1, 2, 3, 4. Oh no, that one's good. 6, 4, that one's good. 6, 4, that one's good. 6, 4, that one's good. So now I gotta check my slopes. I need a slope of positive 3 over 2. So, this guy's out, negative slope, out, negative slope. So now all I gotta do is check these two. Which one has a slope of positive three halves? Well, four over six, rise over run. That's two over three, so it can't be that one. It has to be A for number 26. Twenty-seven. I need the slope-intercept form, so that's y equals mx plus b of the line that goes through there and is parallel to that. So I've got the x and the y I need, but I don't have a slope, but I know it's parallel to that. So this slope is 1 minus minus 5 over negative 3 minus minus 1, which is 6 over negative 2, which is negative 3. So now up here, my m equals negative 3. So I have an x, and a y, and an m. So I can find b. So I can just put these into here. So y is 3 equals negative 3 is my slope, times m, which is negative 4, plus b. So 3 equals 12 plus b. b equals negative 9. 
So I have my B, my M, and my X. My M is negative 3, my B is 9. So Y equals negative 3X minus 9. Oh, and look, there it is. Number 27 is A. Hot dog owner makes profit of 100 when he sells 90 hot dogs. So if I graph that, profit must be on here. Up and down, there's my profit. And this is my dogs. When I go to 90, I'm up at 100. 90, 100. When I sell 25, I lose 30. So at 25, I'm down here. 25, negative 30. Dun, dun, dun. X, Y, X, Y. Then all I would need is my slope. And I can put it into the proper form. So my M is 100 minus minus 30 over 90 minus 25, which is 130 over 65, which is 2. So I look over here and I see what has an M equals 2. Only D. So it has to be D. Ordered pair here for 29. f of x, right? Well, what's x now? It's 3. So, which of these has x is 3? Just that one. What quadrant do these guys intersect? There's my quadrants. x equals negative 7. That's way over here. Negative 7. 2x plus 1. Up 1 with a slope of positive 2. Up 2 over 1. Where do they intersect? Right there. Quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3. So number 30 is quadrant... My pen stopped working. Quadrant 3. 31. Joey bought 8 books. You've already seen this one. 8 books. X plus Y equals 8. Some are 12 bucks. 12 bucks. Some are 18. 18 Y. Spent 108 right there. Kim earned this. You guys had a lot of trouble with this. She invested $1,500 between two bonds. So she has an X investment and a Y investment. And that equaled 1500 One was 8%. So 8X plus the other one was 10%, 10Y equaled $132. But remember, percents are decimals. So I got a times by 100. So I got a times that by 100 to get 13,200. Now I just solved the system. And it's quite easy. The only one I care about is the 10% one, which I made Y. So I need Y, so I get rid of X. So that means I take this and I multiply this by negative 8. So I get negative 8X minus 8Y equals 1,500 times negative 8, which is uh, 8,000 plus 4,000 to get negative $12,000. And then I add them. 2y equals 1,200. So y equals 600. And I look over here and I see that indeed there is a 600. Rational numbers. Three quarters, that's a fraction, that's okay. Seven one, that's a fraction, that's okay. Root sixteen, that's four, that's okay. Half, that's okay, that's okay. Root five, root five isn't a rational number. So thirty-three, dead. Three, that's cool. That repeats, that doesn't, dead. Root ten, that's got no root. Pi, that's got no root. So it's dead, so it has to be A. 
Simplify the cubed root of 1080. So you need to know cube roots. I'm going to do this the long way to show you guys the whole thing. 1080. That's 10 and 108. 2 and 5. Done. 108. 12 and 9. 3 and 3. 2 and 6. 2 and 3. Now I just count it up. 2, 2, 2. So I've got 2 cubed under there. Gone, gone, gone. 3, 3, 3. 3 cubed under there. Gone, gone, gone. What's left? 5. There's a group of 3. It comes out. 2. There's a group of 3. It comes out. 3. What's that leaving under there? 5. With a cube. 2 times 3 is 6. Cube root 5. There it is. Simplify. Anything to the 0. What's that? 1. Do I ever multiply anything by 1? No. So it is just 3a squared cubed. 3 cubed, 27. A to the squared, a squared cubed, a to the second. Boom, B. Equivalent to that, oh my goodness, oh good gravy, what a horrible mess that is. I can't believe how difficult it's going to be. But it's not. Because over brackets, I follow the rules. I just multiply. So I have negative C to the negative two-thirds. Fractional exponent. Where's that? And negative. So where's it got to go? Down to the basement. Negative C to the positive two-thirds. Fractional exponent. That comes out to the denominator, or the, the, the uh, rat index. Then that squared, and what goes here? Negative C. Just like what we had all along. It just looks different. Simplify that. Ugh, yuck. That's hard to simplify. No index, so what is it? Two. 3 and 4. So let's put that into exponents. Isn't that x to the 3 halves? 2 becomes the denominator. 3 becomes the numerator. And isn't this one x to the 4 thirds? Yep. And what's divided by? I subtract. So isn't this x to the 3 halves minus 4 thirds? Which is x to the 9 over 6 minus 8 over 6, which is x to the 1 over 6. Where does that go? To the index. There it is. A. Expand and simplify. That means I'm squaring it, so I write it like this. 4 times 4x, 16x. 4 times negative 3, minus 12x. Then I'm going to minus 12x again. And then I'm going to add 9. 16x squared minus 24x plus 9. D. Pam is simplifying number 39. Lovely work here, Pam. To simplify that, she took x and multiplied it by everything. There it is. Then she took 3 and multiplied it by everything. There it is. Yay, good job, Pam. Now we check. X cubed. Oh, Pam's on fire. Oh, I'll do that in blue. Sorry, guys. X cubed. 2x squared minus 4x. Pam is on fire. Now let's check this other one, which I'll do in red. Minus 3x squared. Oh, she's kicking it. Minus 6, 6x. Oh, she's going. Negative 3 times negative 4 is, of course, positive 12. Oh, Pam, look what you've done. Shameful. So her first mistake is in B. So we move along. Number 40. The shaded area. The shaded area would be 2x plus 11 
times x plus 5, wouldn't it? The whole thing. So that's going to be 2x squared plus 10x plus 11x plus 55 to get 2x squared plus 21x plus 55. But it's not the whole thing. This part is cut out, so it's subtracted. This part is, of course, x minus 2 times x minus 6, which is x squared minus 8x plus 12. So that has been subtracted from over here. So I'm subtracting x squared. I am subtracting negative 8x. And I am subtracting positive 12. So 2x minus x is x squared. 21 minus minus 8 is 30. 29 x and 55 minus 12 is 43. There it is. Number 40, C. One GCF. GCF of 12, 4, and 6 is 2. How many x's? 2 x's right there. How many y's? 1 y. So where's that? B. 41 is B. 42. Factor that. I need to multiply to negative 20 and add to negative 8. It is, of course, 10 and negative 2. So I need x plus 2, x minus 10. 2 minus 10 to get the negative 8. There it is. 42 is d. 43. How many factors does it have? So i got to factor this whole thing. I don't like that 2, so I'm going to factor it out. Divide everything by 2, and the GCF is going to come out to the front. x to the 4th minus 12x squared minus 64. Now, I'm going to look at that and see that even though it's got an x fourth up there, that's no big deal. I know it's going to be x squared negative, so plus c minus c, x squared to add to negative 12 and multiply to negative 64. What is it? Well, it's 16 times 4. But it's got to be 16 positive minus 4. No, that would be positive 12. I need plus 4 minus 16. And I look like I'm done, but I'm not, because that's squared minus a squared. So I factor again x squared plus 4, x minus 4, x plus 4. And I see there is one factor, there is two factors, there is three factors, there is four factors for 43c. Joe was asked to factor this with algebra tiles. Oh, Joe. So if I had to factor this with algebra tiles, I'm going to need to know all of them that would have been in the middle. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take 6x squared plus x minus 15. I'm going to bring that over there. It's negative 90. So I need to multiply to negative 90 and add to 1. What is it? Well, it has to be negative 9 plus 10. So that means I'm going to need negative 9 x's and I'm going to need 10 x's. Negative 9's and 10. So I'm going to rewrite this as x square x plus 10 over 6 and x minus 9 over 6. And then I'm going to fix it up. That becomes 
5 over 3. So that's 3x plus 5. And this one becomes 3 over 2. 3x minus 2. Dummy, Myers. Sorry, 2x minus 3. Now I've got it. So those are my factors. So when I multiply them out, I get my 6x squared. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's my 6x squared, so I'm okay. 5 times 3 is negative 15. There's my negative 15. So I just need the middle ones. So 3 times 3x three times negative 3, I need negative 9x's. 5 times 2, I need 10x's. I have one positive x. So I need 10 positive x's. So that means i got to add 9 positive x's. And I need negative 9 negatives. So it's right there, 9 of each. 44 is b. Using the ruler below. I come right out here to 7 and 1 8th, but I started at 2, so it's only 5 and an 8th. Plant trees two steps apart. Which of the following estimates is closest to two steps? Now, I say it's 6 feet. Which of these is the longest? Yards, kilometers, meters. Well, I'm going to change them all to any single measurement. I'm going to go with meters. That's 1,000 meters. That's 900 meters. A yard is slightly less than a meter. So 1,000 yards is slightly less than a kilometer. So that is smaller than that. 0.6 of a mile. Well, 1 mile equals 1.609k. I've got 0.6 of a mile, so I would have to do 0.6 times 1.609. So I get out my calculator, 0.6 times 1.609, and I get 0.965. So that is 0.965K. So look at those, and which one do I have as being the longest? 1,000 meters, which is 1 C. Dad, is it okay if we borrow some towels? Why do you need towels? We were on the trampoline, and Rebecca's soaked. Yep. Um, sorry. Uh, 1,000 liters. Well, because it's a cone, you guys know this, it has to be A. Because you can't divide it up evenly. Because down here, it's narrow. Slant height is 45. I need the volume. Well, I know the volume of a pyramid equals one-third area of base times the height. Well, I don't have the height, but I do have this triangle. That triangle is 45, 15, and I need H. So 45 squared minus 15 squared gives me H. So I go to my calculator. 45 45, 45 squared minus 15 squared equals 1,800. And then I square root 1,800. And I get 30 root 2, or 42.42. So I come back to here, and I go my V equals one-third the area of the base, which is 30 times 30, 30 squared 
times the height, which is 42.42. That's going to be 900 times a third. It's going to be 300 times 42.42, which equals, you can see, you should already be able to get the answer, 42.42 times 300 equals 12,726. We have 12,728. That's our best answer. Cylinder with that diameter and that height is half full of water. So, my cylinder is filled half full of water. So this is all water. It's got a diameter of 10. D equals 10, so R equals 5. And it's got a height of 6. Because the whole thing is 12, but it's only half full. So the volume of water here, the volume of water is pi r squared h, which is pi times 5 squared times 6, which is pi squared is 25 times 6, so the volume of water is 150 pi. Agreed? Now, I'm going to drop a sphere that is 5 centimeters in diameter into the water. So the volume of the sphere is 4 pi r cubed divided by 3. The sphere's volume radius is 2.5. So that's going to be 4 times pi times 2.5 cubed all divided by 3. So the sphere is 2.5 5, 5 cubed equals equals that times 4 equals that divided by 3 equals that. Change that to 20.5 3, 3, pi. Now, how far will the water level rise? Well, this is, my new volume is this, isn't it? So my new volume is 170.833 pi. And I know that that has to equal has to equal my pi r squared h. Pi r squared is still 25, so it's going to be 25 pi times h, my new h. So I just take this and I divide by 25 pi to get h. So I go back to my calculator. There it is. I add the 150. There's my 170. There it is. And now I divide that by bracket 25 times pi. Close brackets. And I get 2.17 centimeters. Which isn't one of your choices. So I have made a mistake here, guys. Let's have a look at this situation. What have I done? We're going to erase this all, delete, and I'll erase this all, and see what I did. So, our cylinder is going to be right at the beginning. Our radius is 5, our height is 6, so our cylinder at the beginning, our volume of water, is still pi r squared h, which is still pi times 5 squared times 6, which is still 150 pi. When the sphere drops in there, I'm going to get the volume of the sphere is going to be 4 pi r cubed divided by 3. So, that is 4 pi times
times. We'll do this again. This is looking a lot like what we did before. So let's uh, just make sure. Oops. 2.5.5 cubed. 15.58. So, 15.625, so that is 15 and 0.625 divided by 3. So, 4 times 15.625, 4 times 15.625 equals that divided by 3 equals, ah, oh, there's my problem. It's 20.833 pi. Duh, Myers. 20.833 pi. That's my volume. So now, I go back to here. My volume is these two. So it's 170.833 pi equals pi r squared h. Now I know it's 170.833 pi and pi r squared. My r is still 5 so it's still going to be um, 25 pi h. I divide this by 25 pi. Now I do 170 oops sorry 170 0.833 divided by 25 and I get 6.83 centimeters. That's my height. So my H equals 6.83. I started at 6 so I went up by 0.83. Sorry about that guys. A little bit of a mistake there. Volume of that object. Oh, wow, that is a tough question. So what is missing from that? Um, there's a lot of ways to do it. Um, I looked at it this way. I said the whole thing was 9 times 4 times 6. So the volume of the whole thing would have been 9 times 4 times 6 which was uh, 36 times 6, which was 216 centimeters total. But this volume is 186. So that means what's missing there has to be 216 minus 186. So that had to be 6 minus 6 is 0, 11 minus 8 is 3, and 1 minus 1. So that missing part had to be 30. So the volume equaled 30. And the volume of that is x, x times this, which had to be 3, times this, which we know is 4. So it had to be 12x had to equal 30. So x had to equal 2.5. B. Angle of elevation of the sun is 15. There's the sun. Angle of elevation is always from the ground up, so that's 15. How long is the shadow of a 64 meter tall building? Well, there's the 64. So what did I have? I had a theta of 15. I had an opposite of 64, and I needed the shadow, which is, of course, the black part on the ground, so that my adjacent equals my S for shadow. So, what uses O and A? Tan. Tan. 15 equals O. 64 over A. I do division, and I go 64 divided by tan 15. And I get 238.8 meters, which is 239, so it's C. 
Tracy's driving that truck, 7% grade. 7 over 100. 7 over 100. That's the slope. Which will calculate the angle between the road and the horizontal. This is the road. This is the horizontal. That's the 7. That's the 100. I need that theta. Opposite and adjacent. 10. So 53. Oh. But I need an angle, so it can't be that one. It's got to be that one. Tan negative 1. 53 was C. And finally, in the multiple choice, 54, calculate the height of the cliff. You've already seen that question a lot of you. Again, opposite, adjacent. So tan 74 equals O over 7. 7 times tan 74, 7 times tan 74 gets me 24.41, 4.41, but I have to add 1.68 to get 9, 0, carry the 1, 26.09, which is 26.1. Finally, these guys. Water slide descends 20 meters over a horizontal distance of 50. 20, 50. What's the slope? Rise over run. 20 over 50, which equals 2 over 5, which equals 0.4. Slope is negative 2 thirds. That slope is W over 24, if they're parallel, what's W? Well, that means negative 2 over 3 had to equal W over 24. Crisscross, 24 times negative 2 is negative 48, had to equal 3 W. So W had to equal negative 16. And 57. The cost in C dollars is right there. I need the value of k if ck is 166. ck is 166. There's ck. So it's 166 equals 0.15k plus 22. Bring that over. So it's minus 22, which is 144 equal 0.15k. Divide by 0.15k equals... 144 divided by 0.15 equals 960. 960. Bacteria culture doubles every hour. There's 10,000 now. So that means one hour ago, divide by 2, there was 5,000. That's at minus one hour. Divide by 2. 2,500. That's at minus 2 hours. Divide by 2. 1,250. That's at minus 3 hours. Divide by 2. 625 at minus 4. And finally, 59. No, not quite finally. Calculate the surface area of the solid hemisphere. That means this circle is part of the surface area. So it's 4 pi r squared for a sphere, but divided by 2, plus pi r squared for the circle. r equals 6. So it's 4 pi 6 squared divided by 2, plus pi times 6 squared. Now do that math. That's 36 times 3, which is a um, hundred and forty-four. One forty-four pi divided by two plus thirty-six pi. Well, one forty-four pi divided by two is seventy-two pi plus thirty-six pi, which equals a hundred and eight pi. Now I go to my calculator. One o eight times pi equals 339.29.
And the question says, nearest square meter. So 339.29, nearest square meter is 339. And the very last question, find x. So I need x in this bottom triangle. I have 32. I need opposite over hypotenuse. So I need that number first. How do I get that number? 26 squared minus 10 squared will get me y. y squared. I need y. So I go to my calculator. 26 squared minus 10 squared equals 576. I square root 5. I square root 576. I get 24. So y 570, 576 equals y squared. y equals 24. So now I come to here. I know that's 24. Theta equals 32. Opposite equals 24. Hypotenuse equals x. Sine 32 equals 24 over x. I go back to my calculator. 24 divided by sine 32 equals 45.289. And they want the nearest centimeter. 45.2 nearest centimeter is 45. So there we go, guys. Sorry it took so long. Hope you enjoyed it.